ทุกคนครับวันนี้พิเศษมากนะครับถ้าเราดูจากเซสชันนะครับเราจะเห็นคุณแอนโทนีชอนะครับยังไม่รู้จักใช่ไหมครับว่าคือใครเดี๋ยววันนี้เราจะได้รู้จักกันนะครับเราเราได้คิวพิเศษไปสัมภาษณ์คุณแอนโทนีด้วยได้คิวพิเศษของคุณแอนโทนีครับเดี๋ยวเราไปร,รู้จักใช่ไหมครับอ่าเดี๋ยวเราไปสัมภาษณ์เขากันครับได้คิวพิเศษเดี๋ยวไปติดตามกันครับว่าเป็นยังไง let's go sure I'm Anthony I'm Anthony Shaw from Australia I work on Python sometimes work on the Python compiler I wrote a book called C Python Internals And I made the VS Code extension, oh. VS Code Pets. So the big announcement recently from GitHub was that Python is now the number one oh. language in the world. Yeah. yeah. So we've overtaken JavaScript, which is really cool. Oh so I think that, in particular for AI, Python is really, really popular. So for data science and AI, Python has always been popular. That's just going to continue to grow and grow and grow. So next year, what we're going to probably see more of is that Python will become faster and better for machines that have multiple cores, multiple CPUs. So like you can do more work in parallel. So I think that's always been really hard for Python, and next year we'll see that continue to improve. The person who invented Python mm -hmm. was recently. He said that he doesn't understand everything about Python, and wow. he created Python. Oh. So I think it's it's almost impossible to know everything about mm -hmm. Python. Mm -hmm. So my advice would be to be involved in open source projects, uh, open source, like yeah. big software projects, yeah. because you learn a lot about the more advanced Python techniques. Do continue to learn and do courses. Whether online courses, I think that's a really important thing to do. Um, but mostly, it will be working on big software projects is the best way to learn and improve your Python skills. So, if you want to use AI with Python, there are lots of libraries that you can use. Because uh, really, what you're trying to do when you use AI and Python is your communicating with AI, whether that's via an API, or you're running the model, the inference model, on your machine locally. So if you're doing that, then you would start off with Hugging Face, and you would use the Transformers library, probably, to um, use and execute a model. So you do inference. Or if you want to connect Python with AI and backwards and forwards, you can use something like a Langchain or an Olama. Which is a really nice way to kind of extend the functionality of the AI, because all the AIs can do at the moment is like finish sentences, write text, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Like they can't think and they can't execute code. So there's a really good way to connect those two things together with with languages like Python by using libraries like Langchain. What's that about? If on Hugging Face, there's a whole catalog of models, so for AI models. And you can look at the model catalog and understand what does this model do, what oh. features does it have. So this morning at the conference, I mentioned Typhoon, which Typhoon. is a a language model specifically trained for Thai. Oh. So it's very good at Thai. Wow. Um, so if you wanted to use Typhoon, you would use Hugging Face transformers oh. from Python. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you could basically run a Thai language model yeah. from Python. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So there are some things that is accessible for everybody to do, and there are some things which are not that accessible. So this is the challenge: is that my recommendation, open source is massive. Okay, so getting involved in open source projects and contributing to open source projects is critical to being a world-class Python developer. You need to be working on the code and the projects that the other world-class developers are working on. And all of them are working on open source projects. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can start small. You can just make a small bug fix or do documentation, yeah, 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 yeah. like, and then just build your way up. Yeah. But you need to be in open source. The second thing you need to be doing is you need to be talking to other developers and learning from them. Mm -hmm. So, like, even if you're incredible and you're the best developer, mm -hmm. just always assume that you've got more to learn. Yeah. So like, Agreed. I always, yeah. when I'm working with other developers at conferences, I'm not trying to prove to them how much I know. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to ask them what do they know, oh. so that I can learn from yeah. them. 
So it's not about bragging and about trying to show off. Yeah. It's more about what can I learn from them? And I just assume that I have something to learn and something to gain. So, and then the thing I mentioned, which is maybe not that accessible, is that if you can go to conferences and events that are specific to Python, like so PyCon, and um, there are different PyCons around the world, but they're a great place to learn, but you need to have money to travel. That's the only, that's the only downside, yeah. So, so always eager to learn. Yeah, always eager to learn and listen and don't assume that you know more than the other person. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's really good. Thank, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, thank you so much. Okay, yeah, cool. So, cool. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.